Hi everyone, welcome to Week Spay Reserve. My name is Clara Zubrick and today we are standing on our observation deck that is on the uh, boardwalk trails that goes behind our visitor center. And you can see out behind me this beautiful image of the bay and our marsh. And today that's actually what we're going to be talking about. We're gonna be talking about some of our marsh habitats. And so you can see this marsh surrounds the bay. It also borders our rivers that feed the bay. And you'll remember Weeks Bay is an estuary. So what is an estuary? That is where the rivers meet the sea. So we get fresh water coming in from Fish River and Magnolia River, and they mix with the salt water that we um, receive from the Gulf of Mexico. And so because we have, um, you know, that brackish environment where we have salt and fresh water mixing, um, and we have more fresher rivers and a saltier uh, mouth of the bay, we see two different types of marsh habitats. So we actually have salt marsh and tidal freshwater marsh here at the bay. And these marshes provide great habitat for all sorts of different animals. Um, and they also provide us with ecosystem services. Now, what is that? What is an ecosystem service? So that is um, a, something we get from our natural environments um, that benefit human communities um, in a specific way. And our marshes, like I said, they provide really valuable um, ecosystem services, valuable benefits to us. And today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about some of what those services are. So the first service I'm gonna talk about um, is how our marshes stabilize our shorelines. And this is something really, really important um, because when our shorelines are not uh, uh, stable with any sort of vegetation like you can see over in here we've got these sugar cubes this kind of represents a, a bare sediment we don't have any marsh vegetation or really vegetation at all growing and what happens is when we have big floods or a lot of rainwater and we get a lot of water washing against um, those shorelines they kind of erode away there's nothing stabilizing them there's nothing holding them in place so you see as we get more and more uh, flood water coming through rainwater they just erode. Whereas compared to um, a marsh, which is vegetated with lots of grassy um, plants that have a lot of uh, dense, uh, um, extensive root systems, they help absorb that water rather than letting it all um, filter through at once. And they also stabilize that shoreline so you don't see them eroding away and washing off into the, uh, you don't see all that sediment washing off into the water. And so something else that our shorelines do, or our marshes do, is they help protect against storms. Um, so here in the Gulf Coast, we see a lot of tropical systems come through. There's lots of hurricanes. Um, we also have a lot of rain in general, especially during the summer months. And so we see a lot of water, either from storm surges from tropical systems or uh, big rain events. And these marshes act like sponges. And so they help absorb that water and they prevent a lot of coastal flooding in developed areas. And so you can see they don't necessarily absorb absolutely all of it, but they help slow it down and have a, a high residence rate. So that water sits in those marshes and it absorbs them and it doesn't let it all just rush through all at once. So something else we rely on our marshes for is water purification and filtration. So our marshes, um, all of that vegetation really helps absorb nutrients, any pollution coming off um, from our watershed. So things like agricultural pollution or, or different industries, uh, chemical plants, manufacturing plants, they can emit different types of pollution that get into our water. And in urbanized areas, we see a lot of hard substrate um, that's pretty slick and that pollution kind of just runs right through. It doesn't really um, get absorbed anywhere. So you can see a lot of that pollution makes its way down here into the water and that's kind of representing the Gulf of Mexico. So as this water, this polluted water comes through these um, hard surfaces, passes these over these hard surfaces, there's nothing there to absorb those nutrients. And they ultimately end up in our waters in the Gulf of Mexico. And that causes issues with eutrophication, which means a lot of um, nutrients in the water. And that can lead to algal blooms, um, which lower the level of oxygen available for different aquatic species. And so we can see things like fish kills 
And um, what our marshes do, rather than letting all that pollution run off, they do a great job of absorbing those nutrients. So they don't get all you can see, but comparably less, they filter those nutrients um, because of the longer residence time of water in that habitat. They're able to soak them up and store them and those plants utilize those nutrients and are able to um, grow and flourish. And uh, it's actually, you know, like fertilizing the marsh. So you can see Again, they help trap those nutrients and prevent them from getting into our coastal waters. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you learned a thing or two about our marshes and the amazing services they provide us with. And I think we're gonna turn it over to Nancy now, who, now, who has a great art lesson to follow up on our shorelines here in Weeks Bay. Hi everybody, here we are again at Weeks Bay Estuary and um, this is our squeaky, squeaky Sneakers, our virtual lessons we've been working on. Today I want to talk about how we can draw a day at the bay, um, the beautiful shoreline right along the river. So many people when they come to my art class they want to start bring a ruler to draw a tree and I'm like no, when you're drawing nature throw away your rulers. Let's talk about how the water travels. It almost never makes a straight line. So when I'm looking over my shoulder here at the beautiful bay, the first thing I'm gonna do is take my piece of watercolor paper. You can use a Sharpie. I'm using a Sharpie so you can see what I'm drawing. You can use um, a crayon. But the first thing I wanna do is, I'm just thinking, you know, the water when I'm looking at it, it kinda curves and I'm not drawing mine exactly, but it's, it has like little inlets where the current went around and made another little hole. Here I look like I'm go, going up a hill, doesn't it? The next thing I might wanna do is maybe somewhere out there, you might see where a man has been living along the bay. So maybe we could draw a little boathouse over here. So we could draw something like this. So that's just a rectangle and, I mean a triangle and the rectangle for the, for the bottom part. And you could come out and draw the pier. So something like this. Okay, so just to give you, and that looks like a lighthouse the way I drew it, doesn't it? So it would help if I had drawn it at an angle, but I'm drawing mine upside down. So that might be where you see the boathouse. Um, one of the things is I might do is I might draw some of the marsh grasses along here. I like to just kind of see the patterns. Um, as an artist, I can look over here over my shoulder and I can't count every tree in there. So to me, it looks like a whole bunch of broccoli and all different kind of shaped vegetables just tossed together. And so I, this is what I do. I might draw a few trees right in the foreground or the middle ground. I might draw a tree here and here. Oh, maybe there's a tree that has branches like this, you know, and it looks like, it looks like a cheerleader with a bunch of pom-poms or a stick of broccoli, uh, something like that. So I might draw a few trees but I'm gonna give you an artist secret, so listen closely. When we can't draw everything we see, I'm looking across over there at the skyline where the tree line meets the sky, and I'm just gonna come along here, and it's, it just kinda of goes up and down, because that shows you that's not a straight line because it's not man-made. I drew this bumpy line to show the tops of where the trees are over there. So, so far we have this, and maybe what else could I draw? Oh, maybe some more trees over here. Some of them may be down at the shoreline. Um, they're all different shapes trees. I might draw some shapes like bushes, but I don't draw everything in because there's so much going on here. One of my favorite things to do is to draw things. If I look out there, sometimes I might go out, I might see a little kind of like, a piling or a little marker for when the boat, boat captain's driving. Maybe there's little things out there like that. Maybe you could draw a boat in. Maybe a boat is going by with people. Okay, now don't laugh at me because I'm drawing upside down. So mine's going to be looking different because I'm trying to draw this upside down. So maybe there's a boat going by. Oh, I'm going to make this a sailboat. You know why? Because I just feel like it. Okay, even if I did do my sail upside down. How about that? Oh, because you know what? There's no mistakes in art. You want to see how I'm going to correct that? Let me see how I can correct that. Maybe I'll make it a much bigger. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Do you see that? It still turned into a triangle because you need to remember I'm drawing upside down. So um, maybe I'll put some little waves in here. 
Never ever give up on your art. You saw I just made it oopsie because I am drawing upside down, but what you do is turn it into something else. So if you were starting to draw an animal but it doesn't look right, turn it into a tree. That's my secret. So here's the next thing I'm gonna do. First, I'm gonna take my watercolor set. This was on watercolor paper. You heard me talk about that 140 pound weight watercolor paper. The next thing I do is always wanna put a few little drops of water in your watercolors, which I had already done. So they're kind of woken up. You don't wanna ever dig in the watercolor. You wanna just kind of dip the little bit of color. Let me show you what I'm gonna do first. This is one of my favorite things to do. Oh, and maybe I'll show you another secret because I can. I'm gonna add something else. Okay, let me see. Watch this, do you see what this is? It's a white crayon, so you can't see where I put it, can you? Watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna draw some waves in here. I just threw this in because I'm having fun with Clara as she videos me, I wanna show her my stuff. huh? So I drew, did I draw straight lines or is the current usually long and wavy? So let's see if we can see my current lines. I did that with a white crayon. I'm gonna come in here, and I think the water looks kinda of green today. So I'm gonna come in here. Whoops, I meant to get this wet first, didn't I? Sometimes I get it wet, all wet first. Uh-oh, you can see some of my current lines, can you? See those lines happening there? So I'm getting it wet. I like to get, the reason I like whenever I, whenever I paint water, I love to have the paper wet first because I don't want it to have a lot of pigment on it. I don't want it to look like I'm painting a bathroom or kitchen wall. I want it to look like this. Look, I want to come over here and go, there goes the water like this. See how it kind of, it's called bleeding, how it bleeds out. Oh, okay, what else do I see in the water? Oh, you might have some tiny little drops like this where the current is breaking. Oh, let me see what else. Oh, sometimes the sky's a little blue, so I could add a little blue in here, just in case we're gonna see some of the sky. So water often reflects the sky, so you can add a color that you might see in the sky, because sometimes it shows through. You can even draw your brush the way you think, like, oh, I see some big waves right down here right now, so you can draw some waves coming in. Can you see where I drew my little white current lines? Can you see that? So I will go around this sailboat person, and if his head turns green, he's gonna have a green hat on. So there's that so far, and when I'm going to draw, I'll kinda of do the same thing in the, in the trees, but I want it to look different than that. So what I'm gonna do, watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put a lot of, because it's the time of year that I see a lot of yellow underneath the green, I'm gonna put a little yellow all in here because it's so much new growth out there. So yes, yeah, some of it's dark green. I'm gonna put some different yellows in here because I wanna create a background that's interesting. Then I can come on top and make a green. Maybe it's that kind of green, maybe it's this kind of green. And I'll let some of that yellow show through. Yellow show through. And so after a while, I won't even stay in the lines. See how I'm doing this? I won't even stay in the lines. I'll just start painting the whole background. If you think a tree's here, draw a shape of a tree. If you think there's a tree trunk here, you can add that in. Okay, you can add a trunk in. This one, I'm gonna come in like this. If that's too dark, sometimes I draw my trunks too dark because I had too much paint on my brush. I can water it down. I can wipe off some of that pigment off my brush. I kind of like it a little bit lighter. And I don't want my paint to come on so thick. Maybe I'll add some branches on this one, okay? I don't want it to come on so thick that it dries sticky because that messes up your painting. So I would kind of keep on going like this, keep on adding. Oh, and don't forget, I'm skipping ahead because I'm gonna show you some finished pieces. One thing you might like to do is if you, you can also do your sky you can get it wet first, or you can come up here with the blue. Ooh, that looks like water when I'm painting it upside down. If you wanted to have a cloud in here, if you wanna add some clouds, this is my secret. Come in here and draw some ovals or draw some shapes and then color all around it. And you're still gonna see some clouds in the sky. See how I did that? On watercolor paper, when you're painting, you have to leave the white available. So you have to remember not to paint there. See how I did? I've got some clouds in the sky. So I'm gonna show you in just a second some of my finished pieces. 
because I don't want to spend all my time painting this demo because I know you're in a hurry to go paint yours. You can, of course, you can paint your pier. You can wash your brush often. You can come back in, change, you know, oh, maybe I'm going to put some, maybe I want some stripes on my sailboat. Okay. So I'm just going to, I'm just, I'm inventing my own. Maybe this is another sail here. I don't know what I made, but maybe I invented a new sail that looks like a kite. So here's some other ones to show you, just to give you some other ones. So this one, I put a lot of blues and purples. I love purples as a dark shadow. So I'm just going to flip through and show you, depending on what I saw, sometimes I see a bird on the piling. Sometimes I'm fascinated with, oh, here's a bunch of those little boat houses. And it helps. I did my pier upside down. It helps if you draw it at an angle. So just bring it at an angle, either left or right. Here's another one of those little channel markers. If you want to add dolphins to yours and don't know how to draw them, how easy is this? Draw a triangle with a little curvy there and then put, do the patterns. After this dries, you can come back in with a darker color blue or green and add the patterns of the waves. Here's another one. It was the time of year. This one might have been, I think I saw a lot of orange in it. Sometimes that's the flowering flowers or sometimes the, the signs or the rooftops. Just adding a little bit of another color. Since we're drawing so much green in nature, red is the opposite color of the green. And so here's another one. And the wind's picking up. And so you can, oh, look, here I even wanted to draw. It looks like a little school of fish. So if you see something, when you are the observer, when you go find a body of water, you draw down, sketch it down in your sketchbook, and then go home and add the details in your painting. We're so happy you joined us here today, and come enjoy beautiful Weeks Bay. And bye, guys.